Kellyanne Conway spends a lot of time in that house, the White House. The big she, house. That's right. She is counselor to the president, and she joins us live this morning. Hey, Kellyanne, great to see you. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. So the leaking, it's got to stop, according to Anthony Scaramucci, and he happens to be on the receiving end of one of the leaks. Politico was reporting, and he was tweeting about it, that his financial information was leaked out. And I think we have that tweet. I'll read it to you. It says, in light of the leak of my financial disclosure information, which is a felony, I will be contacting the FBI and the Justice Department, hashtag swamp. And then he ends it with at Reince45. Why did he include Reince's name in that tweet? So I discussed this with Anthony, and I discussed the overall issue just this morning with the President of the United States, friends. And the fact is that we just have to cut down on people thinking it's cute and it makes them popular and it somehow enhances their resume and their portfolio for later on to carry favor with folks who are more interested in covering the the style and not the substance here, more mm -hmm. interested in covering the, but the palace injury. But I think the most important part of Anthony's tweet was when he talked about the FBI and the DOJ. He's making clear that even though these documents are eventually uh, procurable publicly, that somebody doesn't want him here. And somebody is trying to get in his way and scare him off from working here, mm -hmm. which is a huge mistake. Uh, number two, there are so many qualified men and women who wanted to serve this president, this administration, and their country who have been uh, completely demoralized and, and completely, I think, disinclined to do so based on the paperwork that we have to put sure. forward, divesting assets, uh, the different the different hoops you have to you have to run through, because this this White House is transparent and accountable, and we've all complied with those rules. But it's really disincentivizing good men and women. I hope it doesn't disincentivize Anthony. Now, there are leaks, and then there are people using the press to shiv each other in the ribs. Right. That's different than a leak. A leak is, did you see the memo Kellyanne put out on this moment? Did you hear what Jared said in the senior staff meeting? That's a that's a classic leak. The other thing that's going on here is people carrying favor with the press, getting their own positive coverage by hurting their colleagues here. That is a complete disservice to the president. Right. The president is doing so well, and when people in this White House and throughout this administration do that, it steps all over the president's positive message of job creation, sure. the billions of dollars in investment, millions of jobs, the thousands of jobs created. Uh, and, and, and Kelly, and the, absolutely, and, you, and we uh, covered it live yesterday right here on the channel, but we're avoiding the elephant in the room. Is Reince Priebus the big leaker, or at least one of the big leakers, because that's what it looks like in that particular tweet that uh, Scaramucci sent out yesterday. And according to the National Journal, uh, apparently Mr. Scaramucci did report Reince to the FBI as a leaker. I'm not aware of the latter. I will just tell you, I think leakers are easier to figure out than they may think. If this West Wing is a very small place. I mean, I will say for me, I'm the jerk who hired a chief of staff, right? Because I thought we we're supposed to work on policy, not three press or comms assistants, because we're not here to curate our images. We're not here to read about ourselves. We're here for the forgotten men or forgotten women, not the one percenters who work here and who frankly are, you know, uh, anchors on TV and, and reporters, not you, but reporters who are always looking to, I think, hurt this president and, and impede his progress. But uh, I, think, I know the president is very serious about this, but the president makes very clear and made clear to me again this morning, the most serious leaks are in the intelligence community. The most serious leaks sure. are when he has a conversation with a head of state or when he's going to do something in Syria or when he, or, or you know, the things that the, that the attorney general will preside over. So we're very pleased that the attorney general has announced a crackdown on leaks. There are a lot of holdovers from the previous administration right. across, the, across this administration currently. There are many unfilled positions. The Senate obstruction on the president's nominees is unprecedented, and it's hurting America. And look at what's happening. I mean, the Democrats, I know they took off their ties and went to a park uh, to try to be casual and say better deal. But the only response they have on health care right. is more government, is single payer. That is not what American wants. American wants a more patient-centric, free market kind of health care, like the one the president just this morning through a tweet is encouraging the senators right. mm -hmm. to pass. He's been here six short months. They've been talking about it seven years. Time to repeal and replace with something more affordable, more sustainable, more accessible to millions of Americans. Yeah, a couple of things. Number one, you mentioned about the president's staffing. A couple of weeks ago, I said it was un-American not to give a president his staff 
for no reason. Non-controversial okay. nominees are not getting heard. They're just delayed because they want to upend it. And my point was, even if you did that to President Bush or Obama or Clinton, uh, let alone this president uh, who's new to politics, I said that was un-Americans. That was misquoted as usual. Now I want to talk about what's coming up today. Repeal, wait two years, replace, didn't work. Today, skinny repeal. Can you give us an idea how the president and the White House feels about skinny repeal, get it into conference? What is that going to be, look, be like that you know of? Look, Obamacare has been the law of the land for almost seven and a half years, and these sinking battleships turn very slowly. This is the beginning of the end of Obamacare. So we, it's not perfect. It's not what some people would want. But it certainly is a big step forward to rescuing those millions of Americans who are not who were lied to by the last president about keeping their plan and keeping their doctor and have not been able to either use the phony baloney worthless piece of paper called an insurance card because the premiums are too high and and those who want the cost of the deductibles and the premiums to decrease so that they can actually access health care mm -hmm. for them and their families. We also want to help the small business owners who we hear from constantly who can't compete with the big guys by providing these types of benefits to their employers. So they want to attract and retain an employment pool by providing the same kind of benefits that the larger companies provide. Uh, all that means is that if you repeal Obamacare the way all but one of these Republican senators did two short years ago, right. and you start to replace it with something that's Are you brings... talking about the flip-floppers, the six flip-floppers? We've got a picture well, of them. I... <laughs> but, yeah, we have that up. But what do you think about the latest, which Senator Cornyn said might be the easiest thing to pass, the skinny repeal, yeah, leaving some things in repeal. place to work out in conference? Right. Well, remember, when it goes to conference, they reconcile all of the different inputs and interests. They, they come out with something that will be the beginning of the end of Obamacare. But I think to get it back to the House and Senate working together is a very positive step. And let me just remind everyone, what this president has done in six short months on repeal and replace is remarkable because it took President Obama 16 months or longer to get his health care pushed through, and he was offering goodies, and he had a Democratic majority, yeah. so that shouldn't have been difficult. This man is appealing to the House and Senate to again promise and have a moral imperative to do what's right by the American people. He is imploring them to go ahead and uproot what hasn't worked and replace it with something that can. But look, the, the main principles are to bring these premiums down, to open up the markets to more individuals, to expand the health savings accounts and to allow Americans for the first time to use those monies to pay for the premiums. See how I like to talk about policy and not palace intrigue? It's fun. <laughs> Kellyanne, yeah. thank you for joining us. And without thank fail, some guys cleaning the White House lawn right. behind you Making while you're talking. Racket. It happens every time we interview you. <laughs> I'm going to eat my lunch off the gravel here today. Right. It's, it's unbelievable. All right. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me. Take you care. Bet.